So disclaimer for this video starting out, it will have harsh language. So if you have children around, don't have them in the room. So this installment of Real RC Talk will be G-Made the Buffalo. Get your popcorn ready. All right, all right, all right. What is going on YouTube? Today on our RC Real Talk, we have a, a forgotten models, forgotten brands, forgotten things, hidden gems, beautiful treasures in the crawler community, brands that people give no respect to. So, <clears throat> there are, there is some videos out there for, you know, the G-Made stuff on some of the other bigger channels, you know, when I think those brands send them. Free. Free, free, free. Free stuff, uh, and they get to put more, they get free stuff to do on their channels, and I don't think a lot of them actually... Go out and buy these models to build them. I mean, I'm sure there's some that do, so... Just a little back history with G-Made before we get into this. Uh, this video might get a little longer, I don't know, because I want to cover a lot of stuff. Some people probably went, Boo! I'll just turn it off right now. I don't got the time for this shit. I don't have time for it. So, uh, G-Made, yeah, they've been around for a good while. Uh, I've had, uh, back it when I was, you know, I've done this crawling stuff for a long time. I uh, started into, uh, started into the crawling world with like, uh, actually before the original SCX-10, uh, came along. I act well, I guess around the time they came out with the Dingo, uh, I was getting into the crawler stuff. Uh, so the Dingo was the short wheelbase SCX-10. The OG <clears throat> and uh, G made come along along in the lines, I believe, probably before, probably before that 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 Axial got that four door Wrangler with the silver body on it, which was still an SCX ten, uh, you know, set platform, just a uh, the shell game with a different body, and I remember G made being along the lines, and they came up with a uh, what they call. So they made the R1 buggy, and you could get it with four-wheel steering. And to my knowledge, <clears throat> that R1 buggy uh, was kind of one of the first models of most brands, I think, that were offered, offered with portals. Because I ended up getting um, the R1 axles with the portal gears and putting them in my SCX-10 that I had the old-school Pro-Line uh, old, like, 60s model Bronco body. They had, like, a pre-runner Bronco body, uh, that I had that I wish I'd have kept because it was a really nice body. Uh, anyhow, I ended up, I ended up putting those, uh, portal axles under my, uh, that build that I had because I actually had one of the first LCG homemade, uh, SCX-10s that was in the group. Uh, so I went with the portal axles to get my clearance back. Uh, underneath my drive line, so I do remember G made kind of having, <clears throat> and they weren't the greatest axles in the world, but they weren't the worst axles in the world. They were dependable. The axle shafts were a little uh, half shafts on the outside. The stub axles were a little soft, uh, so that you could bend them fairly easily if you weren't careful. Uh, but other than that, they were a pretty good axle, you know. So. Uh, that was the downfall of the R1 stuff with the G-Made. So, uh, that was one of their first ones that I remembered. And then they started coming up with, like, the Sawback, which was, like, the Willys Jeep. I'm sure everybody knows that one. Uh, 
<clears throat> you know, I, I had one of those. We had one of those with the leaf springs on it. Uh, you know, it was okay. It wasn't fantastic or anything. They're kind of bigger for a one tenth scale. Uh, if you're comparing them to like Willie's Jeep, there would probably be. They're not quite as big as the six scale uh, on the. Uh, you know, like the FMS Willys, but they're big. They're they're way too big for an actual one tenth scale Willys Jeep, but that don't matter. They're still cool, <clears throat> and they made you know a pretty nice body with them. They were Lexan bodies, you know. You can get them. They made them with a four LS, which was your link suspension, so you could get them later with a link suspension. We had the Leaf one, but that's enough of that. Let's get into this model right here, uh, the G made. Uh, Buffalo GS-02F, I believe is the designation code. For this is the military uh, one that they that they came out with. I believe you can get this in an RTR. Uh, I think this one <clears throat> was the actual kit. Because it came from a semi-local he here area. A uh, guy built it. And I don't think they ran it some... And then I got it, he traded it, and he, he got, I got it off him, uh, off, off of another guy in a semi-local group, and it was basically brand new. It had been run a little bit, uh, but not really to the point to where it was ringing in and abused or anything like that. So, uh, when I got it, you might as well say it was like getting a new RC and doing a rundown on it, um, you know, and... Uh, kind of just wearing it in, see how long it would last. Uh, I knew G made made good stuff uh, when I when I was doing the deal and trading for it, and it you know it, it was in a lot better shape then. You know it's taken a lot of abuse. Uh, it's my son's primary trail truck when we go out. Uh, when I got it, it had a um, I had a Holmes motor in it, Trailmaster Sport. Uh, after running it a while, that Trailmaster Sport finally let go. <clears throat> I put him another Trailmaster Sport that I had here in it. Both 550 cans. That's what this uses, is 550 cans. Uh, burnt. Finally wore that Trailmaster 550 Sport out. Uh, again. But we've been running in a lot of water and sand and whatnot. So it went a little quicker than the first one did. The first one had a lot of runtime on it. Uh, burnt through just two 1060s in this thing. Uh, one 1060 lasted forever. Another 1060 shit the bed pretty quick. Uh, so, it was due time to really tear this thing down. And I mean, this thing has lived in the blood, in the mud, in the crud. Uh, it's really been a damn mighty fine platform. to be. So we've had this thing now for... I do believe around three, three years we've had this thing. Uh, and the only thing, because when you get into the G-Maids, if you're a guy that likes to load with brass, which isn't 100% necessary, uh, unless you got a super top heavy hard body, you know, if you got a hard body rig on one of these link rigs that, you know, you're having trouble <clears throat> with the weight of the hard body and it, you know, it's got ED in it. Once it was reluctantly aroused, it was hard to get it aroused, and it is hard to get it aroused, but we got it aroused. It flops around all the time. Uh, then, you know, some brass to counteract your body will help you, but the problem you run into with these G-Maids are, you know, it's not like everybody's TRX4 and they got it blinged out like they got, you know, like the top rapper's grill. And it's loaded full of brass, which in my opinion is just not needed in most situations. Uh, they don't, there's not a lot of brass out there for the G-Made. So, we'll get into, right off the bat, if you get one of these, what you can expect upgrade wise before we get into anything else because that's kind of an important thing in the RC hobby community situation so right off the bat this runs the G made axles and you can see here I really like how what they've done with these axles they are an angled something like the rock jock axles they have a smaller pumpkin housing 
and they're rounded and smooth, so they glance off of everything. There's not a bunch of hang-up points on these axles. They're not chunky. They're not big. They're not bulky. They don't have shit hanging down off of them. These axles slide over things very, very, very nicely, and they don't have a bunch of hang-up points out here on the knuckles and stuff. Everything is very conservatively done on the axles and clean. That's one another reason why I like these, because this straight axle with this design will actually glide over where portals go as well. These things have lots of nice clearance if you're running a chunkier, bigger tire. These things will hang with your portal rigs, your TRX4s and whatnot for axle clearance with a good tire on it and, and these axles because they're so small pumpkin design. And they call this like a G something 44. So it uses like your 44 style, 44 axle. They do use the axial style outside the, not the, I don't think the knuckle is the same or your C-Hub, I mean, but your actual steering knuckle is actually the same. So, you can get aluminum and you can get brass out here around 96 to 100 grams, putting both sides on. Uh, you can get these uh, steering knuckles in brass or you can get them in aluminum because the, the, the AR44 outside knuckles are the same as the G-Made. They're interchangeable, so they have that degree angled steering to give you better steering and all that good junk, too. The C-Hubs, I do not believe you can use the Axial C-Hubs. I do believe they are different. Uh, however, G-Made does make aluminum uh, C-Hubs as well, so you can upgrade the C-Hub to an aluminum C-Hub on the G-Made, and you can get like the brass or the aluminum AR44 knuckle on the outside. And that's really all you need to worry about upgrading. Come standard with really nice metal link. I have not had a problem pulling out an end on a link or stripping an end out on a link or a steering link or bending any of these links. They've all been made really well. It is a three, it is a three link in the front pan hard. Um, you have, it, it's very nice. The suspension's very nice in this. Not really bump steer. There's not really any bump steer with this. It doesn't float around on you. It's very nice. Their suspension set up in the three link and the pan hard bar works extremely well. You got your pan hard right here. Uh, so since we're going to, you know, we're into the axles, we'll get into some of the suspension. Now, this thing was designed not to work with super long travel shocks. Uh, when I got this, it had like 100 millimeter shocks on it, and that was a big no go. Uh, it worked okay, it flexed good, it maneuvered around, but it would just pop drive shafts all day long, and it caused binding in the suspension. Uh, from what I found, the most max you're going to get out of this thing is a set of 90 millimeter shocks on it, and you're going to be pushing the drive shafts at the limit on it with that. Uh, I am currently running, uh, actually Red Cat Gen 8 shocks is what I have on this right now. Uh, and it gave me the exact, you know, suspension travel front and back. This thing works phenomenal. And they are, to get a droop out on it how I wanted it, it's got a full, it's got, there's no battery in it. With a battery in it, it droops out a little better. Um, I have Axial, the lightest shock springs, front and back on the, on the, and I'm running the Axial, uh, actual pedestals for the spring mounts on this as well on the actual Red Cat Gen 8 shocks. Red Cat Gen 8 shocks are not bad. Tear them out and rebuild them and seal them up like I did doing this one. Uh, so, you know, this thing's got a real nice body. It's the later model style blazer, like the 82s or whatever front end on this one. It's very nice heart grill, comes with all the light provisions. This is not the stock bumper. It actually comes with the correct military style bumper in plastic for the military blazer in that year. Uh, I guess they didn't have licensing shit from General Motors, so they just called the Buffalo. And there's no Chevy badges or anything like that. Um, I've done some detailing to this one for my son because it was time. Just made a license plate I had laying around. And I put the Chevy emblem on it that needs glued back on. Uh, it does come with just decals for the taillights. I am going to be cutting this and getting him the Traxxas Blazer taillights and putting the Traxxas Blazer taillights into this body. 
uh, so he has proper taillight provisions on it because this truck's not going anywhere. It's one of our favorites in the in the in the staple of our of our trail trucks. So um, it's finally getting some love after all this time now. But uh, <clears throat> it does come with the bumpers are odd. Uh, they're made onto the body, and then they're actually part of your body mount system here. Uh, your bumper slides into your body mount in your chassis and then you put a body pin through it You can pull two body pins and uh, You know pop that out of their your bought your bumper mount and then the fronts the same way how they made these there's right here You'll have bumper mount bumper mount Well, it would have slid slid into a mount right here And then you'd have had a body pin and a body pin and that's what held your bumper and your body on Done away with that. I was saying the guy that built that done away with this, and it's got the you know screw down pro line post, which I don't even really like those that well. Uh, I just I wish he'd I I just I hate putting holes in bodies for most stuff, especially this is a fairly decently scaled trail truck. So, uh, but you know it's better than this system down here. Uh, I do believe, but it had an after it has an aftermarket uh, you know metal. It has a metal bumper so with the standard bumper mount in the front of it i do believe this accepts your standard traxxas or i mean standard axial style bumpers so that's what this is so anything that you get with like an axial bumper i think should fit right on these with no problem at all if you want to run a different type of bumper uh you can it has the provisions right here for a bumper right on this corner and then it just you know screws down in like a regular bumper uh, I've pulled from these and everything over the years pretty hard. We haven't broke anything. You can actually pull from this back bumper, surprisingly, if you have the body pins back here. It will pull pretty hard from that bumper without breaking. It's very surprising. It does come, the military one, I think all of them do, come with your CB antenna and your mount from the factory, which is cool. Uh, I think the non-military one also comes with a radio antenna here. They come with the scale mirrors on them. They come with the uh, kind of bushwhacker style fender flares from back in the day, which that would be right. A lot of guys would run the bushwhacker fender flares on these. Uh, and I like that because you can run a chunk of your tire. It gives you a little more clearance without rubbing. Because uh, these are the tires, the Geolanders off of my vanquish buggy and they work really well on this thing for an rtr tire so this thing needed a little taller of a tire on it how i have it set up for my son to get him a little bit of clearance uh the stock sliders are really nice on these these had a set of fancy pants uh aluminum with carbon fiber plate sliders that hung clear out here they looked pretty and they looked cool but they went like shit on rocks uh, so it's one of those upgrade items that look fancy and great, but they just the performance isn't there to match the pretty So I pulled those off. I cut them Cut them in half Slid them in raised them up didn't have to trim the body holds the body now uh, And he has plenty of clearance here Plus it won't tear up the chassis or the body on the sliders. So that way he still has sliders uh, a little bit of modification modify so the topper uh, this is painted with a textured flat black uh, because it was starting to get scratched this thing's been through the ringer and needed something to get a little more collar and look to it and i like that uh, i did add these all thing i did weight wise so far i do need to get him the brass up here knuckles i am going to add those to the front uh, one thing up here uh, i do have higher mass these are a military wheel i don't know if you can buy these anymore uh, this company came out with these when Traxxas was making the, uh, it was the TRX-4 they made with the military weird body on it. And this is like a wheel that this company made in a high mass and it's not aluminum, it's steel. It's an actual steel wheel. Uh, and it's like a solid thick steel wheel with a heavy weighted uh, brass ring in the inside of it they're they're like 140 grams each i think or 130 grams each on the wheels and uh i ran these because they were a military wheel and i thought they'd look right on the military blazer even though this probably would have had just your normal rally style steel wheel i'd imagine from the i don't know but um i don't know man i don't know much about the military chevy stuff i'm not even that big of a Chevy guy, to be honest with you. I'm more of a Ford guy, but, uh, you know, 
Chevy's more prominent, and this thing was badass, and my son likes military shit, and it got him interested in an RC, so it was a win-win-win-win-win. Um, so yeah, anyways, we got that. That's it from the outside, you know, and I've just detailed it up. These are the stickers that come with the kit and all. It comes with all that, you know, all that stuff. And like I said before, it comes with your light provisions. You know what I mean? It comes with, you can put headlights in this. It does come with a tail light provision, but it's just the sticker that the light grows, glows through. It's not an actual tail light like the Traxxas Blazer. This body, in my opinion, is made. Bodies are nowhere near the quality of the G-Made Lexan here. Uh, body and quality wise is what I'm saying. Uh, now, they may be a little nicer offerings from Traxxas scale wise. I mean, this looks pretty good to me. Uh, but, you know, the lines may be a little better on the Traxxas, but, uh, you know, like what I'm saying, like your crease lines and stuff like that might be a little better. I mean, to me, it's not, but somebody else might feel that way it is. Uh, but this body is a lot heavier duty. Uh, it's not going to crack and bust. And this thing's taking hard hits, tumbles, rolls, slides. Uh, it's been beat, 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 beat rough. I ain't seen a beating like that since somebody stuck a banana in my pants and turned the monkey loose. Thing and it's just it's taking it. So we'll get the body off of it and we'll get a closer look at it. All right, so we'll start here with the body, and this is what I was saying. It's a very heavy, heavy gauge uh, Lexan style for your body, so it's not just gonna crack up on you and crease up and stuff. It's actually this is my homemade light harness I made for the headlights I just put cheap um I just put cheap headlight kits in it one of those cheap ones that cost like three or four dollars I'd buy that for a dollar on eBay because I my son doesn't run it all it wasn't you know blowing out tons shit tons of money for a my trick RC light kit uh when these work so if it got dark my light shut off on my tripod so uh, and like I said, this is your rear mount right here to slide your body in. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it does work. And believe it or not, the body ain't cracked or nothing. When you put the body pins in here, you can actually pull from this. You'd be surprised. Uh, they do give you a provision in the kits. I've looked it up. That kind of like snaps over here or some shit. And then you can put like, I think it's three millimeter red LEDs and it'll glow through your sticker. Uh, I didn't get that stuff when I got this used. There's actually a grooved out spot right here. But I'm going to try to cut these out and put the Traxxas blazer lights in there uh, to make it a little better. And I might put the Traxxas sticker thing over the back here. I don't know. I'll have to investigate what the blazers actually look like. So, But that's the body. It comes with nice little O-rings and body clips so you can pull your door handles. You can pull your mirrors. You can pull your wipers. Uh, I really like how they've done that. It's really nice in my opinion. Uh, so you can take your accessories off here and just buy a body and reuse all your accessories. And then everything screws down here in the front. You just take screws out and all this comes out. This is not cheap made uh, crap. And you don't have to buy anything extra uh, for your light provision stuff like Traxxas likes to do with a lot of their stuff. So I do like that with the G-Made. So, getting into the meat and taters of the entire situation, uh, when we get right here to this. Now, we have upgraded to a 2 and one 1800. I have a 2 and one 1800 SE in this thing. Uh, so, we're just going to go with the pros. Because, to be truthful, in my opinion, there's not a lot of cons with this thing. I have upgraded to the 2 and one 1800. Uh, never mind my massive wiring harness in here. Uh, this is running rock lights and a bunch of other stuff. I have to clean this up. This was a quick build to get my son's lights going for him. And I got an extra harness down in here because I've got other ideas for it. Uh, it has a two-speed transmission. The question is, it has three different selectable overdrive setting options. So I thought it was a 5% originally. But you can swap your gears around here on this top shaft, and you can have no overdrive. You can have 14.29% overdrive, or you can have 22.22% overdrive without buying anything extra with the G-Made. In my opinion, that's a huge thing. 
you know, and you're, you're not overdriving and you're not underdriving any of your axles. So it's all done in the transmission. So basically, you're just underdriving the rear with the transmission set up. And I find that, I think that's a really fantastic thing. If you're wanting, you know, an overdrive. And then it's set up, you can run a no overdrive. And you don't got to buy any extra parts. It comes with everything. Uh, I ended up switching my stuff around. And I ended up having, I have this, a four, the 14.29%. I've taken this thing apart now, transmission, because I had to service it about four times. Uh, and I am now running the 14% overdrive in this, uh, in the front of this now to give it a little more, you know, give it a little more help because a little bit of overdrive is good in a lot of situation, but I think you can get a little too much overdrive. That's just my opinion. Uh, just depending what you like and what your personal preference is it's too much overdrive. I've just, my preference is for me, 20% is pushing the overdrive for me. Another pro with this thing is really badass how they've set this thing up. I mean, this shit's pretty cool. It has like counter rotating dry shafts, like counterclockwise and clockwise. So you don't get all that torque shit that you get with a lot of models. Like you get, uh, like the TRX4 does the damn dog leg shit, lifting, lifting, lifting up on the steep inclines. Uh, you know, it's dog legging, three wheeling, stunting. Uh, th these G maids don't do that. Uh, they 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 have like a direct rotational anti torque twist uh, transmission design to where it's like a linear. This transmit this is almost in line, perfectly straight. So you don't with like how the gears go inside the transmissions. So uh, you get like. You know, one dry shaft is counteracting the other dry shafts, and it's in a perfectly straight line how the gear sets work, so you're not getting this bullshit lift and, uh, you know, rocking up and wanting, you know, it's, it's really nice. Um, going forward, backing up, these will lift this wheel up backing up because backing up in reverse, it kind of does push against uh how it, the design works but going forward you don't get this you know a lot of models get this lift and th these don't do it because of how they design that uh anti-torque twist type setup inside the transmission a lot of torque twist reduction transmission is what they call it and we went over like the counterclockwise rotating dry shafts and whatnot uh they offer this in RTR, they offer these in kits because I know some guys are all, I just want a kit option. So, which don't make a shit. If you're doing what you're supposed to with the damn RTR and you're taking your transmission and you're taking your differentials out and you're greasing them, uh, then it doesn't really make a shit a bit of difference whether you're buying a damn RTR or you're buying a kit. Um, now, these are a little, we're going to get into pricing. I'm going to cover every damn thing. Every damn thing. So, we'll get into now, uh, you know, they make a kit, they make an RTR, so everybody can be happy and not cry. Uh, so, you can get either one of them. Uh, I do like the forward battery tray on this. Uh, they have designed it to where you can move the tray around a little bit. Uh, it has some adjustment stuff to where you can run a smaller pack in the middle you can run a full size pack. I run a full size pack on this on my for my son. Uh, it holds this thirty five hundred milliamp gold uh, you know, three S. I run all my shit on three S. Don't waste my time on two S shit. Uh, it's just not worth it. You vault, you gear down, you volt up. Uh, so, yeah, we've got that set up in here. Uh, so, that's the pros. It, like I said, it's got a real nice forward weight bias design. This thing does not need a shitload of brass. It's what you're really going to need is on those knuckles. We have uh, Steven's 304RC. Uh, he's got the brass knuckle weights on his truck, and he's running a set of Canyon Trails on 1.9s that he's put 2.2 foams in because the tires were so wore out, and he stretched the tires out a little bigger. And it's going strong, and his truck is a G-made Buffalo, same as this one. It's not the military, but they're the same damn truck. Uh, that Blazer kicks ass all day long. It's turned, he said, like he said, it's turned into one of their favorite trucks. 
So this does have a fan provision on the front, so you can put a fan up here if you want to put a fan uh, to keep your motor cooler. This thing doesn't, you know, it's smooth. Uh, the drive line does tend to be a little noisier with this, especially with the body on, because that big damn SUV body is like a like an echo chamber uh, inside. So, once again, I'm not out there with the DNR officer with a DB meter on the damn trail worried about him writing me a fine for noise pollution because it's a damn RC car and I don't really give a shit about the transmission being a little noisy in it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me... And I don't think you got to worry about these being discontinued with, with G-Made. I think they're going to continue making this platform. I think it does sell halfway decently. And I think this is one of their, like, flagship models or whatever in their lineup. Uh, and they do still make a bunch of upgrades for them. I think they make metal trusses. They make the aluminum trusses and see how, like, your, your links and everything, your link mounts. I think they make those in CNC aluminum. So they do make upgrades for this, guys. You will be able to buy, like, some upgrade stuff for it. These are a heavy-duty diff set. You're not going to break these. Uh, I've had these apart several different times. Uh, everything's marine greased in there. It comes with CVD axles. I should have covered that to begin with. It does come with CVDs. This thing does steer fantastic. It's got a hell of a steering angle on it. Uh, it steers very nicely. Uh, this 1800 complements this gearing setup. This is just stock gearing it comes with. Uh, what I have it geared on my pinion. And the spur, I didn't change any of that stuff. This is the same pinion spur has been on this truck for the last three years with shit tons of runtime and abuse. And it barely shows anywhere whatsoever. Uh, so it does come with the hardened steel pinion gear too as well. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I have managed to kill like three shift servos because this is such a pain in the ass setup on the two-speed on this truck. Um, I finally got it working pretty good right now. And this is a crazy high torque Traxxas. <laughs> you know, I said crazy high torque and then I laughed. This is a high torque steering servo off of a Traxxas. A uh, little overkill, but I need this thing's just such a nightmare to get it to shift. I could not get this thing to work. I don't know. And I've taken it apart and taken it apart and taken it apart and taken it apart. This is one of the worst things. I told you we'd go over some of the cons. The two-speed is a mother-flipping nightmare shift-wise on these. You have to keep shifting them in and out and getting them forward, backwards, forward, backward. Once they start getting some wear on them, brand new they don't do it. But once you start getting a lot of runtime, for some reason, I don't know if it's this part of it here that starts wearing. I don't know. I got it working pretty good after tearing it apart, lubing the transmission up, going through it again. Putting a higher torque shift servo. I do got it shifting in and out of first and second gear for him now. Uh, you, I would highly recommend having a transmitter that has an actual uh, endpoint adjustment on it, not just a switch. You want an endpoint because you're going to have to dick around with your endpoint to get this thing to shift in and out sometimes. Uh, it's nothing I'm doing. I've had tons of two-speed trucks. Uh, and this one by far has, the, in my opinion, the absolute worst two-speed shifting on it. That's one of the main downfalls of this thing. Uh, and I've tried making my own aluminum links and different shit and uh, come right back to the factory stuff. And, it, you know, a little bit of tinkering around with them and, and working on it, and it seems to work. So, yeah, that's just, I don't know what else to say about that. It's just, that's one of the worst downfalls I find with the truck. Uh, is the two-speed shiftability of it, if, you, if, you, if you're wanting the ease of the two-speed. Um, everything else has been fine. I haven't broken any plastic shit. I haven't broken any axles. The CVDs are starting to show a little bit of wear in the front, but nothing bad or concerning. You know, after over three years' worth of abuse running in the sand, the blood, the crud, the mud, you know. Uh, so... You know, this thing's been through two brushed Holmes motors, and everybody knows how long they last. Don't play like you don't know. Don't start that shit. Homie, don't play that. Uh, this thing's been through two steering servos, 
The factory one lasted forever. I can't even remember what I got in there now. Uh, I think it's an Eco Power turned up to 7.4 volts, and it, it whips the shitties fine. Uh, we got, I think that's what that is. Like I said, several of the shift servos, totally my fault running a transmitter without an EPA adjustment. They just burn up and got hot, not the truck's fault. Uh, we have burnt through two 1060 ESCs on it. So this thing's got some use. It's not been titty babied around. It's been used. Rip up one set of tires on this thing. I don't have them here close by. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, definitely a 475 tire on this because of the straight axles. It makes an, a huge difference. Uh, it was a huge improvement going to these taller tires for my son on this thing. And taking, I had four fives on it and they just weren't big enough. They were too small. I had takeoffs, four fives, I think, off of one nine Wraith. Whatever comes stock on the one nine Wraith, what I had on it. Great going trail, great growing, going trail tire, just too small on the rocks. Um, this thing's pretty easily modifiable. Like I said, you can run standard bumpers in the front. You can run standard bumpers in the back. You know, just your regular axial style round tube, whatever bumper goes up in here if you want to run different bumpers. We've just been content on running the bumpers that come in the setup. Uh, it does come with metal, uh, you know, provision on your diff cover. They don't make any brass diff covers that I've been able to find. If you find them, hey, good for you. I have. They do make your truss back here in aluminum. They make your lockout stuff back here in aluminum. I think they do make aluminum bumper mounts for these as well if you want to do some stupid pulling stuff. Uh, these are made stupid well, and they're built in. They come clear up the chassis. They bolt in. They lock nut. They, these things pull super good. You're not going to rip these up and break them easy. Uh, even pulling and ripping on ship with bigger power, uh, a 2300 system in this truck would eat it, would eat it big time. It would, it would kick serious ass with a 2300 in it. Uh, I just went budget because the truck's not on the trails every time we go out, but my son's going out with us a lot more. So I wanted him to have a good, a good system in here with good power and 1800 is plenty to get it done. You know, I, he don't need a 50 cal when a 308 will work. Uh, and I think a lot of people overdo shit. That's just my opinion. You know, you don't need a, I always say it, you don't need a supercharged big block Chevy when the small block will win the race every day. Uh, so we went with a small block in this one and it worked out really, really good. And I need to get some zip ties on this shit and clean it up because I had this install and I went out and ran it and ran like two, three S packs through it straight to it after putting it together for the third or fourth time. So, that is the G-Mate. Bravo. Uh, that's the G-Mate Buffalo. They make this in the truck. They make it in the Blazer. Uh, I think we covered most of the stuff. The one thing I did forget to cover, and I even had it wrote down. Uh, one downfall is, and you can buy a part. Let me grab them before we get into this. What I was saying is, this this thing has out here on your differential how they made this is you take this dry shaft apart and you have your pinion out here output and it's made right on to your dry shaft so you don't have the standard to run a standard dry shaft with a five millimeter output is what i'm saying well they call it an input i call it out because it comes out but they make a part here and for the GA44 axle, there's the part number, GM30101. I bought these forever ago. Uh, Dixieland RC is where I found these at because they were hard to get. I should have bought two or three sets. Uh, they're both in here. There's two, one for the front, one for the rear. You take all this apart, you take this, you slide these up in here, you bolt them down, and now you can run a standard drive shaft. It gives you a standard, you know, five millimeter input right here for like running incision drive shafts or axial drive shafts. Uh, these haven't broke yet. Uh, I haven't had any really that many problems with them. I have I had to go in here and relock tight the grub screw that holds the pin together. Uh, but if you would get this in enough of a bind and you break this pin and shit, this is designed to do away with all that so you can run a standard drive shaft. So G-Mate thought ahead on that one. So you do have those. 
Uh, and that's the part number. I'll hold it up there again if I can get the camera to focus on it for a good second. That way, if you guys have this. And I, I can't put a link in there because I don't think he, I don't think I have this. I used a totally different account and everything. I bought these so long ago. Uh, but uh, Dixieland RC is where I got those at. Um, he may even still have them. I don't know. But I used a totally different account when I bought those. So, uh, guys, that's the G-Mate. Uh, real simple body installs on these. I'm going to hit the damn camera because we're amateurs around here. I'm an amateur asshole. Uh, body slides up in. Your mounts there, find the holes, push it on, if I can get it, there we go, and then you just screw these down. I do like how the body goes on and off these, uh, on these trucks, it is pretty nice, and then if you had the factory stock, you would just put your pins and put your pins, and then I've got these, you can pull them down and it locks the body in. These are just aftermarket sliders, like I said before, so... But, you know, for as far as a Lexan body goes, you know, they're pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, they're right up there in my opinion with on Traxxas for the way they look, but that's my opinion. Uh, and I like, I know I, you know, I still, I like Traxxas too, but, um, you know, you got to have other options out there. And this is a straight axle truck, so you're looking at finding you know everybody considers the straight axles more scale so you have a straight axle uh they are they are similar to that vanquish rock jock design like i said though they 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 clear really good guys they don't get hung up on shit my son goes out and this thing performs with rigs that has brass up the ass uh and you know a lot of times he's pulling the trigger and going on the throttle and stuff and uh this thing has been fine and it's performed any kind of complaints about that so now that we've talked about this now that the video is already longer than dog shit uh let's go ahead and get into some more g-made stuff and we'll just add this extra if everybody watches i love you you're fantastic you're great so let's get into that all right, so we got, I figured I'd get in here on this one. So we got the, we're going to cover some just rundown of G-Mate stuff that a lot of, a lot of the G-Mate stuff that doesn't get, you don't see it anymore. And something I am going to get my hands on another one. I had one for a hot minute and I got rid of it. And that was the G-Made. Sorry guys, I'm rubbing snuff because I'm an adult and this is adult time. The G-Made GOM. G-Made G-O-M. They made it in a kit. They made it in an RTR. And it's a tube style buggy. It was made to compete with the 2.2 Wraith. I think the GOM was ahead of its time because it's an older setup. It was a weight forward bias design, similar to this. Had a two speed transmission, had full wheel steer provision, had a very nice nylon caged buggy design with panels. Uh, it was a lot, like I said, to compete with the 2.2 Wraith. So it had GA60 axles, which 60 width was like three quarter ton axles, something what you'd consider compared to a one to one. And the GA60s were basically the same width as like the AR60s from Axial. Uh, I had one. It was a fantastic buggy. Uh, back then, we didn't have all the fancy two-in-one systems and stuff. So, you know, brushless stuff was just stupid expensive back then. Uh, so, and I got rid of it. I think I ended up trading it for a Wraith. I wish I wouldn't have traded it for a Wraith because I already had a Wraith to begin with. And uh, that G-Made GOM, I think, has been discontinued now. They still make parts for them, though. That's the thing with G-Made. You can, even if they discontinue a model, 
pretty much all you're going to be able to get parts from G Made for it. So that's why that's another reason why I like the G Made stuff. They're not like a bunch of the other companies that discontinue shit and then they just quit making parts. Uh, which sucks. I wish the manufacturers would at least backstyle backstock parts uh, to cover people for a longer extended period of time uh, when they make these because people are blowing out good money for them. So we're going to get, because I know I'm going to get comments in the video that it's overpriced and all kinds of dumb shit. So we're going to break this down. So you basically, I was at the hobby shop, local hobby shop, which is actually a 70 mile drive, 60 something 70 mile drive for me one way. That's my local hobby shop. I'm not lucky like most people. Uh, looking at prices and stuff. This and an RTR, I believe if you look around enough, you'll find it around 549. Uh, maybe 569. They fluctuate. You can probably find them a little cheaper than that every once in a while. Uh, comparing it to your big brands, like Axial, you know, Yes, the SCX-10 2 you're going to be able to get a little better price on because it's an older design. Two, will not do, scaled out wise, what this will do, stock box, both of them. It just won't do it. My brother has the 10 2 Honcho. Will not do what this will do. This even comes with a better tire on it. The RTR comes with a better tire uh, on it than than the Axial does. So if you take both of these and put them head to head, I already know. The G-Made literally breaks it down like a shotgun. Like you're in prison. Cell, cell block D. And it's over. It's just, it won't it won't compete with it. You can come at me all you want to comments. I already know. I've owned them all. Uh, this holds up just as well. What I'm saying is, you, performance wise, you, if you want to, because this is a Blazer, it's on a 313 wheelbase, I do believe. The Blazer and the Bronco, I think, is a longer wheelbase from Traxxas. So it's a little longer wheelbase. Uh, the shocks are better on the Traxxas, obviously. They got some of the best track, you know, RTR shocks in the biz. Uh, my opinion, I like Canyon Trails. I know some people don't like them. We've had good luck with our Canyon Trails. Uh, they, you know, going out and just doing trail stuff with them, they work pretty good for an RTR tire. Wish I had a set of Canyon Trails for this, because the Canyon Trails work better than these, uh, Geo Landers. But if I'm going to spend the money and buy another set of tires for them, I'm just going to buy an aftermarket tire. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, so, um, the probably next comparison for this would be you know, this isn't going to go out and do what a TRX4 Sport does, obviously. If you put the truck body on it, I would say you'd get the, close to the same performance. Uh, even box stock with a box stock TRX4 uh, with the same equivalent tires, I'd say this would probably do just as well with the truck body on it uh, as the TRX4. That's how good this thing is. It performs really good. Uh, you know... But the Blazer, TRX for Blazer, would be the closer comparison because they both have an SUV body on them. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see what else brands you got. You know, I would actually probably put this more closer with how they've got the two speed, the transmission set up, and the forward weight bias and the weight down low because the weight is down lower between your shock towers on this. Probably more to like the VS4. Uh, I think that this would be a closer competitor with the VS4. Because you can get the VS4 with the straight axles on them. Uh, so you would get... Probably honestly... I think these axles personally have a little better clearance on them. Uh, that's just me how I feel. I think with that turned up axle... I think you get a little better clearance sliding over rocks and whatnot. With the G-Made. Uh, budget wise because this is a little more expensive they do have the cheaper version of this I think Mark 
watches. I don't know if he'll watch it because it's a whole video because this is a long video and I've already lost most people because I just said what I feel because that's what new RC talks about. They make this in a cheaper version. The truck body, I don't know what it's called. It's the same platform. I'm pretty sure close to it is this. Might be a little different. It's more of a budget. 400 range, somewhere around there. Probably more to compete with like your SCX 10.2. Probably this is more competing because the Traxxas is way more expensive than this. I think the Bronco and the Blazers are they're around the same time or same price money. I think wise uh, after looking at it at the hobby shop, uh, you know, with like the Blazer and the Bronco and whatnot on these. So uh, the you know that you, there's not really you know big price difference. If you're talking going down to the hobby shop buying an RTR. Now, you're probably not going to find a hobby shop here in the States. You know, G-Made is Korean. Uh, I know a lot of guys, hey, U.S., U.S., U.S. Well, you know, most shit's not made here anyways. Uh, you know, and of course, everybody complains Vanquish is too expensive, which I personally feel that RTR stuff's not that expensive to me. Especially if you wait till like Black Friday sales. You know, you can pick up good deals on, on, on Vanquish shit. Uh, you know, I'm not a big Vanquish fanboy or anything like that. But if you told me I could have a new VS4 or you'd give me a brand new one of these, I'll take the G-Mate because I like the G-Mate a little bit better. Uh, I'd love to have this in the truck form. Uh, I would love to have the, they make a, a blacked out, I'd take the RTR because I don't cry about shit. Uh, I would love to have the black pickup truck version of this. Uh, fantastic. But my next one on the list for GMA is going to be probably one of them GOM buggies. I want one of them, them GOMs really, really bad to add to the collection just to keep uh, because that shit will become worth money later. Uh, I would go buy the truck version of this, uh, which is just the same, just a truck. You know, it's just a truck bed. Uh, they're very nice, man. They're the, the RTR blacked out blazer. They make a blacked out blazer. Uh, they make a blacked out uh, the truck, and the truck's sexy, uh, I think there's a YouTube channel, Mateo's, Matteo's, something like that, on YouTube here, uh, they do, he does a bunch of the G-Made stuff, he might be sponsored, I have no idea, I don't know, uh, he makes great, wonderful videos, he's got interiors for these he's done up, uh, you could easily put that real nice Traxxas Blazer interior in this because the body, I have measured them. They are the same width. so you And you do got sufficient clearance to run. You could hook up, make your own mounts and stuff to run that real nice detailed interior that they make for the Traxxas Blazer in these. You could even put it in the pickup if you wanted. Uh, and you'd have a real nice scaled out Lexan body truck. Um, gonna have a video coming out about Lexan versus hard body uh, pretty soon. In our next installment of Real RC Talk. Uh, because I know there's a big division there in our hobby between ho between hard bodies with guys and Lexan. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, There's no reason why you can't do both of them. Uh, so that pretty much covers the G-Made stuff. Uh, I wouldn't mind having another R1 buggy if you're listening G-Made. Give, give me some shit. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to be one of those guys that just asks for free shit all the time. Uh, but I would take G-Mate on 100%. I will say their products after running this for three years, over three years. I'm super impressed with longevity and the durability of this truck. We have not been easy on them. Check out Steven's 304RC and watch the videos of his red G-Mate. Same, same blazer. It's just a civilian blazer versus this is the military. Same basic drive line and everything. Not a single issue. Performs fantastic. That's just as good as his modified TRX for sport with brass. So, yeah, that's the G-Made guys. Uh, really, I can't see, see how anybody would really complain. In my opinion, uh, price-wise, I don't see why people would complain about. Um, everything's priced, in my opinion, pretty close across the board with most stuff. Um... The only problem you're going to get with this, another con, you're not going to be able to go down to your local hobby shop and just buy parts. You're going to have to order them online. If you're in the United States, excuse me. If you buy these parts, 
for your dry shafts, that's not going to be a problem. You're going to be able to slop whatever wheelbase, you know, 313, 312 millimeter wheelbase dry shafts on this to make it work. So that's what we got with the G made. I may get lost, but I never get stuck. G made, bitch. But, anyways, uh, yeah. So that this is my son's primary trail truck, and it does primarily go out with us all when when, when he goes, um, and he likes this truck. He enjoys wheeling it. Uh, so that's it, guys. Drop some questions, comments. You can hate. I don't care. Uh, this is an open discussion. But the RC Real Talk is I'm doing it because that's what I set this little segment up as, uh, just to let it go. It's more of an adult segment for the channel. Uh, so yeah, and I'm going to put a disclaimer. I'll remember to put it in this video at the beginning. So as always from the RC dungeon, wheel side down, peace.